Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. My sermon today is going to be called Guard the Gates. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Fill me with your spirit in this moment and let this moment uh, be beneficial to, to our hearts, mind, and spirit, God. Open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing to us that we will not have room to receive. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, last night something strange happened to me. I'm typically a, a, ro a romance reader person. Um, trying to diversify my reading and my watching. And so lately I've been what I've been listening to a, a podcast. Um, so I I listened to a few podcasts, and in the past two weeks, I've been listening to this particular um, true crime pod podcast. It's where they tell the stories of true crime, and lately I've been listening to it at night, so because I have my Google and it plays uh, Google Podcasts so I can listen to it at night. And usually it doesn't bother me. It's um, their cautionary tales and whatever and I get to pray for the person's family. But last night, for some strange, for some strange reason, I usually try and turn it off before I go to sleep, but last night, I didn't turn it off. Um, and I started having a weird dream. It's, it was very strange, and I can't really remember it, but I know it included someone someone that I care about and it, it was uh, gruesome and awful but I can't remember exactly what it is and when I woke up when I was fully awake I heard the podcast say the name of the person that I was just dreaming about in this really gruesome way and I said, I said, turn it off. So I turned it off. And then after I, I turned it off, the Lord said to me, guard the gates. So that's what today's sermon's called. It's called guard the gates. And he was, he was talking about the gates um the gates on our bodies so he said there are three gates that we need to guard we need to guard our eye gate our ear gate our mouth gate and our because all those things go down into our hearts. So everything we uh, digest, okay, let me explain it this way. Uh, we all know that we have a physical um, digestive system where when we eat something, it goes down to, to do our body knows what to do with 
with what we eat. So everything we eat has has things in it. And whatever we eat goes down into our bodies. And our body takes what it needs and gets rid of the rest. Um, so, through the course of digestion, it goes in our mouth, down our esophagus, to our stomach, and then our body uh, breaks whatever components down and uses whatever components. That's what I, I remember from uh, grade seven science. Um, and then once our body breaks the components down and takes what it uses, takes what it needs, it gets rid of the rest. That's our physical digestive system. So the word says, so it is natural, so it is in the spiritual. So everything we take in goes down in our system. It, our system uses it, but the but the one thing about our our souls, our mind, will, and emotions, in our spirits, it doesn't have. Um, we don't have a spiritual excreting system. We have to in the physical. Our body naturally gets rid of whatever it needs to get rid of. Um, but in our spiritual life or, or our emotional life, our body doesn't have a way to get rid of it. So we ingest it, but there's no spiritual pooping system where our body can uh, naturally excrete waste every couple of days or every day. So what happens spiritually is what when we ingest something through our uh, through what we see, what we watch or what we hear, it stays in our body and it plays on our mind because our 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 spiritual lives don't have an excreting system, so that's why we need to be careful about about what we listen to and what we watch or what we ingest because there's no system to get rid of it. Although the Lord could help you get rid of it, you need to help the Lord out in this regard. Um, to be careful of what you're ingesting and what you're saying and what you're listening to and what you're seeing. I was watching uh, this thing um, on Netflix about um, the internet and how it can get in about the technology, about the AI technology and algorithms and how algorithms work. Uh, um, algorithms are designed that when you click on something, it it monitors how much, how long you stay on that particular click. From that, it gives you a click like it. It gives you a click like it and like it and like it. And as many click clips as you click on, it knows what you like, what you gravitate to because the algorithm 
gets to know you. And they said for children, this is dangerous because um, when, when a child clicks on something, um, sometimes they can't differentiate the difference. And people um, who are just are just looking at advertising, they don't care that your child is looking at something let's say self-harm let's say someone uh, um, a teenager clicks on something harmless um i don't know clicks on one of their favorite show and it's a really harmless show but the advertisers can from that show maybe um, give them a self-harm video because other people that have watched that video have have watched this same self-harm video so it all gets lumped together and then you like like on YouTube when you click on a video the videos don't stop they just keep going and going and going and going because the algorithm remembers what video you like. No shade on YouTube. This thing will go on YouTube. Um, this sermon will go on YouTube just when I'm finished. It's a wonderful tool, but we need to be careful how we're doing it what we're ingesting and what we're watching because it is insidious um and the lord wants us to really be careful of what we what we see what we hear what, what we say and what we get into our hearts because the lord says look, the lord says like the stomach is for the physical body, the spiritual heart is for the um, spiritual body and the emotion and the um, and the spiritual soul. So, what like the food goes down your stomach? Well, everything that you see. Everything that you hear, everything that you say, um, goes into your heart. It, that's what it, that's what it says. Out of the out out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Because whatever is in your heart, you you say it. And whatever you see, it go. Eventually, it starts to go down, down, down into your mental uh, psyche and starts to play tricks with your mind. So that's why we need to be very careful of what we ingest we need to guard these gates like crazy because your mind is important and your mind ought not to be the devil's playground you're nobody's playground never mind the devil you are a child of god and you need to treat yourself like that you are not a garbage disposal where people can just dump all their trash on you and leave you to deal with the fallout. You need to say, you know what? No, I'm not listening to this. I'm not dealing with this. And you might say, it's just one little thing. It's just one little this. It's just one little that. It's not going to hurt anything 
But like food, if you keep eating and eating and eating, it'll start to affect you um, to the point where you don't know why you're thinking of this stuff. You're thinking of this stuff because it's what you're ingesting. And I have issues with this too, just like everyone else. And I'm working on this too, so I know. I know it's difficult. Because the f to tell the truth, um, we all know the Word of God. We all know what it says about different things. But sometimes th that flesh thing, oh, sometimes the, not sometimes, but the body wants what it wants. Either, um, either, uh, sexual things or n negativity or to cuss someone out to be angry. And we need to be careful that we're not feeding uh, what what our body wants in relation to um, ra sorry rather than feeding what our spirit wants. So thinking on those things that are lovely, thinking on those things that are kind. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is kind, whatsoever is a good report. Think on those things. So, and it's so easy to get caught up in, in things that we know we shouldn't. But the Lord's saying, those gates are precious. What you think in your mind is precious. What what you let into your ears is precious. What you let into your mouth is precious. What you let in through your eyes is precious. And he's saying you need to guard them because it is so important. You need to guard. We all need to guard what we listen to, what we, what we, um, what we what we take in because what we take in spiritually doesn't have a pooping system we can't spiritually poop every day or every couple of days to get rid of it it stays in our mind and starts playing and and before we know it we we don't we don't have a way to get rid of it, so it comes out of our mouths and or stays into our stays in our minds and starts starts changing our thought process, saying maybe this is okay when the Lord says it's not. I find myself dealing with this too. And that's how I know it's harmful. And the Lord uh, began working with me last night on this. And um, it is just going to be a work in progress for me and for you. And the Lord is saying that he understands that it's going to be a work in progress. And we need to um, acknowledge, but we need to acknowledge that this is an issue for me. I cannot listen to this. I cannot watch that. Um, and I'm not saying what you cannot watch or listen to. That's not up for me to say. But. I will say that you have to let the Spirit guide you. And sometimes you cannot watch what your friends are watching. You cannot watch the shows or you cannot listen to the music that your friends are listening to. 
sometimes I may be able to listen to a kind of music that will send you into um, into tailspins, or I may be able to read a kind of book that um, may send you into a tailspin. And sometimes you say, you know what, I can't do this. Or sometimes um, the Lord may use a certain kind of novel or something to say um, that may seem like it's not for you to listen to, but he knows that you're talented. So he will use that for his glory because he knows unlike st some people, you can turn it around because of the gift he's given you and use it for his glory. So I'm not going to tell you what is right to listen to or what, whatever, but I'm saying guard that space, it's precious. And everybody's gates and what they can take is different. Um, they're like... For example, um, I'm part of a book club, and there, when I saw the book in March that they are going to be reading, I said, you know what, no, I can't, I can't do this, because I, uh, um, talking about the World War II and the Holocaust is a trigger for me, so... So, whereas some people can read it and feel sad and just move on, I lose sleep for at least a week reading something like that. Reading anything about the Holocaust makes me lose sleep for about a week and whatever. So, and the Lord said, you don't need to read this book. I said, okay. So I said, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll join them next time because my ear gate and my eye gate, we, I can't digest that. I can't do that because that'll leave me up for a week. Um, so I had to make that decision based on my personal thing. And it's not because I, I love the book club any less. It's just because my personal ear gate and eye gate and heart can't take that without, uh, without letting it send me into a tailspin. Um, so be careful of what you let into your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate, because it's or what comes out of your mouth gate or and it also has to do with who you hang around with too because who you hang around with who you're influenced by can really um lift you up or bring you down peer pressures are really uh uh is a real thing and it's not just, peer pressure doesn't mean just high school students. Peer pressure could mean anything. Peer pressure could mean people at, at church are, are going to do this thing, but, but your ear gate, your eye gate can't take that because it sends you into a tailspin. Or it could mean you know, people at church always talk. People at ch your your circle at at church or at school or wherever always talk negative. So you were a positive person, but they start rubbing off on you because it's what you've been around. So just be careful. Make sure the people that are around you strengthen your eye gate, strengthen your ear gate, and can 
uh, are speaking life to you, not negativity, are speaking, you can do all things, you, you, you can and will be what God has called you to be, you are a priest, you are a king, you are, you are one of God's children. Um, so guys, be careful of what you let in because what, what you let in is very hard to get out. Once you let it in and once you start playing, it starts playing on your mind, it is just very hard to get out. And sometimes, most times it starts with a, just a whisper. Oh, you can watch that. It doesn't matter. It's just a little something. Or you can read that. It doesn't matter. It's just a little. And then a little becomes a lot. And a little becomes a little more. And a little just does all that. Until you're so messed up. You're so confused. You don't know what's right or, right or wrong. And the Lord's saying... You can come back to the today, and it can start today. It doesn't have to be. Oh, I'm doomed. I wasn't careful. What do I do? He's like, start today, start at this moment, and you don't need to be worried about um. What is this gonna? What are they going to say? What are they going to do? Because you're the one who has to be up dealing with this. You're the one who will deal with the consequences of watching that thing, of viewing that thing, of, view, of viewing that 24-hour news cycle with all that depressing news. You're the one that's going to have to deal with all that stuff playing in your mind. You're the one that's going to have to deal with all the dreams from that programming, not them. The Lord will give you the strength to resist temptation. He says um, he provides a way of escape from temptation. He doesn't say temptation will go. He said he'll provide a way of escape. So when he provides that way of escape, take it. You know, a lot of people want to pretend that they're strong and that they can do this alone and they don't need a way of escape. But the Lord is saying right now, the way of escape that he's providing Take it, whatever way it is. You're not a wuss. You're not a bad person. It means just you can't handle that. Like, this book in my book club, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person and I, or they're a bad book club. It just means that I can't take it and it's okay. Um, so guys, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Lord Jesus, help us to uh, understand what, where our weaknesses are and help us to take the way of escape that you provided. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. And sometimes for some people, he, he's attacking it when you're sleeping, you're wondering what's going on here. It's because of what you're ingesting in the daytime, like me in that podcast. It's because of what I was ingesting over the past two weeks. That's why I had that dream. So I need to be careful of ingesting that kind of stuff 
especially before I go to sleep. Thank you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.